In this video, we'll demonstrate Sensing Deployed on Amazon Web Services Elastic Container Service. I'm Michael Doctor. I'll be your guide. Here's a quick overview of our journey. The deployment can be described in three phases, prerequisites, tasks, and services. Once deployed, we'll look at performance metrics on AWS. But first, a few warnings. This demonstration has a cost. I found that AWS authorization is a big challenge. Although the demonstration takes over three hours in real time, this video has been edited to about 15 minutes. Let's get started. Let's find the demonstration on the web. Point a web browser at github.com slash sensing. Search for a repository containing AWS. The demonstration is in the Docker Compose ECSCLI demo repository. At the time of this video, version 1.2.0 is the most current. We'll use that. There are beginning and intermediate demonstrations. We'll be using the advanced demonstration. The advanced demonstration uses these AWS services. Simple queue service with dead letter queue. Aurora Postgres SQL serverless. Elastic container service in Fargate mode. Elastic file system. This demonstration implements the top half of this flowchart. 10 million JSON lines are read from a file on the internet. The JSON lines are sent to an SQS message queue so that multiple messages can be processed in parallel. Messages from the queue are read by multiple readers and inserted into the sensing model stored in an AWS Aurora PostgreSQL serverless database. The table of contents gives a preview of the steps that will be performed. To economize on time, I've already performed the prerequisite steps. The Git environment variables need to be set to provide addressability to files. Authorization is needed to access AWS. This can be done through IAM. In this demonstration, I'm using an AWS session token to set my credentials. Identify an AWS key pair. The sensing AWS project environment variable is used as a prefix to create unique AWS resource names. Later, we'll create a database with these credentials for the super user. You'll probably want something more secure. Installing Sensing requires accepting the End User License Agreement. Make environment variables that contain unique identifiers for AWS resources. Make the project directory. All output will go into this directory. You've probably noticed the clock in the upper right-hand corner of the screen. Deploying backing services and sensing takes about 30 minutes. Most of the time is spent waiting for tasks to complete and services to reach the running state. To keep this video short, we'll be pausing the video when waiting. You'll be able to judge the actual time by looking at the clock. Use Amazon's ECS CLI command to create a local configuration file which holds metadata for the new cluster. This file will be referenced in subsequent ECS CLI commands. Time to bring up the ECS cluster. You'll notice the clock jumping forward as we wait for the ECS cluster to be created. Behind the scenes, AWS ECS CLI uses CloudFormation to deploy the ECS cluster. 
The cloud formation creates a virtual private cloud and two subnets, as well as other resources. We'll be using the VPC and subnets when creating additional AWS resources so that network routes are kept short. The VPC and subnet IDs will be captured in environment variables. To access services, ports need to be opened. First, the security group identifier is located. The ID is captured in an environment variable. To access services in an ECS cluster, ports need to be opened. In this demonstration, the specific ports will be open to all, as seen by the CIDR IP of 0000. In production, the ports would need to be locked down tighter. After this completes, we'll begin to create what 12-factor app calls backing services. The first backing service is a shareable file system. Architecturally, all of the Docker containers share a common file system which will have the sensing engine code installed on it. AWS EFS will supply this file system. EFS is an acronym for Elastic File System. Some services using EFS require mount targets on at least two subnets. The next backing service is the database. Architecturally, it is used to store the sensing model. The following steps set up an Aurora PostgreSQL serverless database. Start by defining a database subnet group. The subnets that were created for the ECS cluster will be used so that fewer network hops will be encountered when accessing the database. For performance reasons, the synchronous commit parameter needs to be turned off. Aurora Serverless uses a cost metric called the Aurora Capacity Unit, or ACU, when scaling up and down. Currently, for Aurora PostgreSQL Serverless, the minimum is 2 and the maximum is 384. Although Aurora PostgreSQL Serverless can support up to 384 ACUs, it's been our experience that the database write I.O. is the limiting factor and that around 40% of the 384 ACUs are wasted. So, for better price performance, set the scaling range from 2 to 192 ACU. The host name of the database is captured in an environment variable for later use. The next backing service is a message queue. Architecturally, this facilitates the parallel ingestion of records into the sensing engine. This step creates an AWS simple queue service where each message is kept until it is consumed or until 14 days has passed. The URL of the SQS queue is kept in an environment variable. To catch bad messages, a dead letter queue is deployed. When a message has been requested numerous times but never acknowledged, AWS SQS automatically transfers the message to an attached dead letter queue. These steps attach a second queue as the dead letter queue for the first queue. All of the backing services are now in place. Time to move on to tasks. Tasks are short-lived jobs. They run to completion. To verify that tasks have run to completion, we look at the AWS console for the ECS cluster. Currently, no tasks are running. The first task is to initialize the Elastic file system. Currently, the file system has nothing on it. Verify that the EFS has been deployed and its mount targets are available for use. This task simply creates directories on the EFS.
we watch the status of the task. The next task uses a dockerized version of yum to install the sensing engine code packaged as an RPM on the attached AWS Elastic File Service. We watch the task run to completion. The task progresses through provisioning, pending, running, and stopped. This step takes four to five minutes. You'll notice the clock has jumped ahead. The next task creates the sensing model database schema in the Aurora PostgreSQL serverless database. Before proceeding, a check is made to verify that the database has been deployed and is available. Now create tables in the database that store the sensing model. The next task creates sensing configuration files on the Elastic File System and inserts configuration into the sensing model. We watch the task run to completion. The next set of tasks read JSON lines from a network addressable file and send them to the SQS queue. In this demonstration, 10 million records will be sent to the SQS queue. There are two nearly identical tasks that push records onto SQS, each sending 5 million records to the queue. This is to demonstrate that the queue can be populated from more than one source. This is the completion of the one-time tasks. We now turn our attention to deploying long-running services. The first service will be a temporary service needed to insert a custom sensing license onto the Elastic File System. This service runs SSHD so that secure copy can be used to transfer a file onto EFS. The host name is stored in an environment variable for use with the SCP command. The path to the license on the local workstation is identified. Using SCP, the file is copied from the local workstation to the Elastic File System on the ECS cluster. To reduce security exposure, once the file is copied, the service is terminated. The next service pulls messages from the SQS queue and sends them to the sensing engine to be inserted into the sensing model. It is a workhorse. As a workhorse, we want the service to scale up and down as required. Identify the service as a scalable target, specifying that the number of replicas can be between 1 and 90. Define how the scaling is determined. In this case, we're targeting an average CPU utilization of 30%. This percentage has been arrived at by trial and error and seems to work well in the general case for both scaling up and scaling down. As they say, your mileage may vary. The final service we'll bring up in this demonstration is the redoer service. The redoer reprocesses records that become ambiguous over time. This completes the deployment for loading the sensing model. Looking at the AWS console for the ECS cluster, we see that there are two services deployed. Let's see how things look at the two hour mark. The SQS queue has about four and a half million records left. Is it on its way up or on its way down? On the left hand side in the SQS metrics approximate number of messages visible, you can see that the message queue at one time held over nine million message and is coming down. Remember that it's being consumed as it's being populated. In the ECS cluster tasks, we see that the workhorse service has 90 replicas running. In the ECS CPU utilization, we see that during scale-up of the workhorse, 
The utilization varied wildly as new replicas were being added to the system. Once all 90 replicas were up and running, the system runs stable. In the database metric serverless database capacity, we see the database capacity scaling up from 2 ACU to 192 ACU. Let's look at the three hour mark. At this point, all the data has been ingested. Naturally, the queue is empty. On the left hand side in the SQS metrics approximate number of messages visible, you see a linear consumption rate. That's good. In the ECS cluster tasks, we see the number of replicas is starting to come down. It will take about an hour for the desired count to scale down to two. That's good. In the ECS CPS utilization, we see that after the initial scale up of the workhorses, the system ran stable until all messages were drained from the queue. Well, that's good. For the database, in serverless database capacity, we see the database start to scale down after all messages have been inserted. In CPU utilization, we see that the system was pretty stable after ramp up. In write ops, we see that it maxes out around 550,000 IOs per second. This seems to be the limiting factor on database performance. That completes the demonstration of Sensing deployed on Amazon Web Services Elastic Container Service. You can find Sensing and this demonstration at the locations listed. It's been a pleasure demonstrating this for you. I'm Michael Doctor. Until next time, goodbye.